Motion correction is a form of registration in which volumes within a single run or within a single subject are overlaid on top of each other. Now usually within a single functional run we collect an entire series of T2 weighted images back to back every TR. Now when a subject moves this can mean that each time we sample another volume at each time point it's in a slightly different location. So volume registration attempts to correct for that by shifting and tweaking each of the volumes to align with a base or reference volume, usually either the volume at the very beginning or the very end of the session. So to do that, we use AFNI's 3D Volreg command. This is short for volume registration. And I'm going to give it some options here. Verbose means print out everything that is calculated and computed and printed to the terminal. ZPad will pad each volume with zeros and then introduce the rotations and then eliminate the zeros. And these other options are required. So a base image is the reference image. So it can be any one of the volumes that was acquired within a single run. The idea is it remains stationary while each, every other run in the volume is twisted, rotated, and translated to match and overlay exactly on top of that reference image. So we are using a data set that has already been slice time corrected. It's called r01.tshift and it's still in original space. Now there were 165 volumes in this run. Again, it starts at zero, so that's why it goes up to 164 at the very end. And we can give it a, an interpolation method. Now, heptic is a seventh order interpolation, and generally a higher order interpolation will give you better results. So remember, since we're moving each image, we need to introduce some spatial interpolation because the resulting image is not going to be exactly over the time points that, or sorry, the location points that were originally sampled. So a higher order interpolation will gather information from a greater range of voxels, both neighboring and nearby voxels within a general neighborhood in order to calculate or estimate the intensity at this new spatial location. So I'm going to use heptic AFNI's 3D Volreg is very fast, so don't be afraid to use a higher order interpolation method. Either Heptic or even Fourier is fine. Now there's going to be a prefix for this data set. I'm going to call it R01 underscore MC for motion corrected. 1D file. This is going to output a motion parameter file. So how much did each volume move in both the X, Y, and Z directions, and also in the roll, pitch, and yaw rotations. Another useful option is this 1D matrix underscore save, and this is going to dump all the matrix transformation information into a text file. So this is the matrix warp that was used to align each volume to the base in DICOM space. And we'll call that mat.r01.1d. This will be used at a later time with 3D Alineate when all of your functional images are co-registered to an anatomical image and then warped to a normalized space. We'll cover that later. And lastly, it needs the input data set. So again, this is a time-shifted or slice time correct data set r01.tshift plus a rig. And as you can see, it goes through each of these volumes, each of these subrics, very quickly. Okay, and so it's done, and it's output this motion corrected data set into R01 underscore MC. So I'm going to open up AFNI here to show you the difference between the slice time corrected data set, the one that was not altered in any spatial interpolation 
So this is going to be R01.tshift. And in another viewer, I'm going to open up our motion corrected data set. So this will allow us to compare and see exactly what's happened with volume registration. Okay, so for both of them, I'm going to open up a graph of the time series. Again, let's just concentrate on one voxel here. And same thing for the motion corrected data set. Now notice at this voxel, the pattern is roughly the same. There's a higher mean intensity image in the volume corrected one, and the variance is slightly lower in the signal. But the point is, there is a difference between this motion corrected volume and this non motion corrected volume because there's been spatial interpolation introduced into the data set. Now, since we've motion corrected and we've overlaid every volume in the time series on top of a base or reference image, when we go through this entire time series, there shouldn't be any motion that you can see in this pane. So, just to show you, this is the non motion corrected data set, and look what happens when I go from the very end time point to the very beginning. Okay, there's a noticeable amount of motion going on here. That's not surprising because over the course of a four or five minute run, the subject will move a little bit. Now we look at the motion corrected data set and we go at the very end time point and go to the very beginning and there's almost no discernible motion. So this is what volume registration has done, and the reason that these values are slightly different in the time course is due to spatial interpolation at these new locations. So it's always good to check your volume registered motion corrected data to see whether anything was thrown way off. Lastly, you can look at the motion parameters visually. You can graph them. So 1D plot can take an argument called Volreg. Now this will expect a six column format text file and it will assign the XYZ parameters and the yaw, pitch, and roll parameters to different parts of the graph. So let me show you what this looks like. And also separate scale to plot each of these motion parameters on a separate scale. Let me find out what I called it. R01 underscore motion. So 1D plot dash volreg dot sep scale R01 underscore motion. All right, so if you look here, you'll see a time course of the motion for each of these different movement parameters. By just visually inspecting it, you can see that there was a slight motion at around time point 96. So this is pitch. This is when the subject nods their head forwards and backwards. That's the most common type of motion that you'll see in your data because it's easiest for the subject to do. But if you see any spikes here, that should alert you that there might have been a huge motion spike in one of those time points, and this might need to be accounted for or censored out when you calculate your general linear model. So that's volume registration and motion correction with AFNI. And in the next tutorial, or a future tutorial, we'll be talking about how to integrate that with 3D Eleniate when you warp your functional images to a standardized space.